Aloha! Welcome to day number 74 in our series talking about baptism. This is baptism chapter number 3 or day number 3, however you want to see it. Before we jump into God's Word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for who you are and every single thing you do for us. Thank you for your word and that we can read it, we can learn how to have a relationship with you, we can learn about what is obedience unto you, we can learn how to live our lives and seek your will for our life. And I pray that whoever's watching this would be doing that, growing in their relationship. Please speak through me this hour, remove the devil and his distractions, and help us all to walk away growing in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, baptism. Day number three, turn with me now to Acts chapter number eight. Yesterday we were in Acts chapter number two. Today we're in Acts chapter number eight. We're going to be looking at another story about getting baptized. And uh, we're going to start in verse number 26. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now the angel of the Lord tells Philip, Hey, listen, you need to go down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, but he doesn't tell him why. Philip is given a command of the Lord, but he has no idea why he's going down there. And look at Philip's response, verse number 27. And he arose and went. He did not question God. He did not question the angel of the Lord. He didn't say, well, why do I got to go down there? I'm not going down there unless you tell me. No, he simply obeyed. Quick side note from baptism, are you obeying Christ today? Are you questioning God? Are you uh, constantly disobeying him? Or are you like Philip and you just, all right, God, you told me to do this. I'm going to do it. Okay. Continuing on about Philip, verse 27, he arose and went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now, Let's break this down just a little bit because you're going to hear me say this a lot. It says there, behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch. We never get to see or read this guy's name. We constantly refer to him as this, the Ethiopian eunuch. That's it. We don't know his name. I'm not sure why Philip and this guy did not exchange pleasantries like, hi, my name's Philip. Hi, my name's... Jack, I don't know. We just we just constantly refer to him as the Ethiopian eunuch. So if you hear me say that, it's talking about this guy right here. But notice a little bit more about him. He's a man of great authority under the queen. Okay, And it says there, he had charge of all her treasure. So that means this guy, he is an educated man. He is very intelligent. He's probably wealthy as well because he's you know just a little bit below the queen he is taking care of her money he's counting her money he's making sure she's not getting cheated so that means he has the ability to write he has the ability to count whatever kind of schools they had back then he was probably top tier in it all right so we know this guy is smart verse 28 it says there was returning and sitting in his chariot reading isaiah the prophet verse 29 then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. All right, now Philip finally gets the reason why he's there. He needs to go to this chariot and he needs to talk to the Ethiopian eunuch. All right, verse number 30. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? Basically, he hears the Ethiopian eunuch reading out loud from the book of Isaiah, and Philip calls out to him, Hey, do you know what you're reading? Verse number uh, 31, and he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So remember, this Ethiopian eunuch, he's an educated man, he's reading the book of Isaiah, but there's something about what he's reading that's a little bit confusing to him. And so Philip says, Hey, do you know what you're reading? Do you understand it? And the Ethiopian eunuch is like, well, to be honest, it'd be nice if somebody explained it to me. Do you know about it? Philip says, sure. Come on in the chariot. Stop walking. Stop running. Hop in with me. Let's read it together. Okay. Verse, verses 32 and 33. It says, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb 
dumb before his shearer, so open he not his mouth. Verse 33, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. This is straight from the book of Isaiah, okay? Uh, Isaiah chapter 53, actually. And so they're reading out loud. He's wondering, what is it talking about? And he even has a question, verse number 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? So basically he's asking, who is it talking about? Who is this sheep that's being led to the slaughter? Now we know it's talking about Jesus Christ. But the Ethiopian eunuch, is he talking about Isaiah? Is it talking, I don't know if he mentions Jesus, but he just says, is it talking about somebody else that I don't know about? And clearly this man does not know about accepting Jesus Christ as his personal savior. That's why he's questioning it. So verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him. Who is it? Jesus. He's sharing the gospel with him. Verse 36, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So he's asking, what do I got to do to get baptized? Is there something else that's in my way that's preventing me from just getting baptized in this water right now? Now remember, what was Philip teaching him from the book of Isaiah? He was teaching him about Jesus. Okay, Remember we talked about that from Acts 2. What's first? Repent, then be baptized. Let's see if Philip follows the same order. Verse 37, he answers the eunuch. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Notice Philip doesn't go say, nothing's hindering you from getting baptized. Let's jump in the water. Dunk. No. He, said, he, he shares the gospel with them. He says, you got to believe with all your heart. you got to accept Christ as your personal Savior. And the eunuch in verse 37 said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Boom. Right then, right there, the Ethiopian eunuch, I wish we knew his name, accepted Christ. But you know what's funny? Is right then and there, that's when God knew his name. That's when his name got written down in the book of life. And look, his next act of obedience, verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Again, the order accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That is the change in your heart. Turning away from sin, turning to Christ. Then we have the outward public testimony. The Ethiopian eunuch hops down, Philip hops down with him, and he baptizes him in the water. Goes, dunks him up and out, uh, into the water and then out. Verse 39, look what happens. This is pretty cool. Uh, verse 39, and when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. This is pretty cool to me uh, for a superhero, all right? When I, even now, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, and even as an adult, if I were able to have one superpower, it would be teleportation. I don't need to use cars. I don't need to use planes anymore. If I want to be in North Carolina, I think about it, psh, I'm there. If I want to be in New Zealand, I think about it, psh, I'm there. This is the act of teleportation, but it is through the Lord. It says the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Notice the eunuch saw him no more. Look at verse number 40. Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. God said, all right, Philip, you're done here. <laughs> Teleport. And he took him to another city called Azotus. That, to me, is pretty cool. But the main thing here, go back to verse number 39. Look what the eunuch's uh, response is. It says, he went on his way rejoicing. That means he went back, probably told the queen, queen, you will never believe what happened to me on my trip. Told family members, friends, you're not going to believe this. I accepted Christ and I got baptized. It's awesome. You got to do the same. There's this guy named Jesus. Look, it's in the book of Isaiah. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Remember that guy we heard about? 
dying on the cross not too long ago and rising again three days later, this is him. We need him in our lives. We need to have a relationship with him. In order to go to heaven, we need to get baptized to obey him. He went on his way rejoicing. Have you done that? If you've accepted Christ and gotten baptized, are you telling others about it? Are you still rejoicing about it to this day? We need to be more like that. Okay, a couple of questions for you here. Number one, if you go back to verses 32 and 33 uh, of Acts chapter number eight, I want you to find the matching verses in Isaiah chapter 53. Now, you don't have to text me the whole scripture. Just text me the number. Is it verses 22 and 23? Is it verses 10 and 11? You just got, it is, I'll give you that hand. It is two verses. So you got to text me those. Number two, what was the Ethiopian eunuch's job for the queen? Number three, what was the Ethiopian eunuch's response after he accepted Christ and got baptized? And then I want you to, number four, I want you to look up Matthew 28, 19. What does that verse say about this? All right, text me. Have a great day. We love you and aloha.